Gypsy Rose Lee was a stunning dancer with a hideous story. Her mother, a true stage mom, forged her documents and forced her to work. But on her deathbed, she dealt her daughter the most chilling betrayal of all. Stay tuned as we'll delve deeper into this topic shortly. Gypsy Rose Lee was the 20th century burlesque performer who barred it all on stage and became a legend in the process. But the details of her scandalous personal life are far more revealing. Gypsy Rose Lee was destined to become famous. She spent most of her life under her mother's thumb and the rest of it in her more talented sister's shadow. But with a clever wit and a striptease act unlike any other, Gypsy became a star in her own right. But as she took it all off on stage, she covered up the details of her personal life. Rose Louise Hovick was born in Seattle, Washington in January 1911. But even before she came screaming into the world, her destiny was already laid out before her. Her mother, Rose Thompson Hovick, wanted nothing more than to become a star, or raise one. Before Gypsy could even walk, Mother Rose enrolled her in dance classes. There was just one problem. The moment she set foot on the stage, one thing was obvious. Gypsy was talentless. So her mother did the only thing she could. She recast her. The very next year, Mother Rose gave birth to another baby girl, June. If my sister had shown any prospects as a moneymaker, June later explained, I would never have been born. There is no doubt in anyone's mind that Mother Rose is crazy. Those were the cautionary words of Gypsy's Aunt Belle about her deranged sister. And that was kind of an understatement. Mother Rose forged birth certificates for both Gypsy and June to avoid child labor laws, so she could push her children on stage and into questionable situations. Evidently, being a crazy stage mom paid off. Before she was even three, Gypsy's sister June was already headlining shows as the tiniest toe dancer in the world. Based on this success, Mother Rose uprooted her girls and took them to Hollywood. While June continued to dazzle audiences, Gypsy found her way to shine, in school. To everyone's surprise, she proved to be a whiz in the classroom. Still, Gypsy couldn't escape her younger sister's shadow. In an effort to turn her girls into stars, Gypsy's mother worked them both to the bone. Sadly, she was neglectful of her basic parenting duties, like medical care. Gypsy might not have been talented like her younger sister, but in addition to her brains, she was also beautiful. With porcelain skin, dark hair, and hazel eyes, there was no denying that she had potential. Just not maybe for tap dancing. Still, Gypsy and her sister began raking in the dough, but there was trouble afoot. By the time they were in their early teens, Gypsy and her sister were earning $1,500 a week for their vaudeville act. But somehow, all of their money kept disappearing. It soon became obvious that their mother had been mismanaging their funds, oftentimes leaving Gypsy and June to go hungry. This led June to do something scandalous. While Gypsy was happy to turn a blind eye to her mother's faults, June was not. She rebelled by eloping in 1928 and running away to Kansas. Without her sister's talents, Gypsy couldn't keep up the act on her own, and it fell apart. But her mother kept her working anyway. Just not in vaudeville. Mother Rose mistakenly, or quite possibly deliberately, booked Gypsy for the Missouri Theater in Kansas City. There was just one problem. It was not a vaudeville theater. The venue was, unbeknownst to Gypsy, a burlesque house. But once Gypsy, who had presumably turned 18, saw how much money the dancers were making, she saw her golden ticket. There is another account of how Gypsy got her start in burlesque that was even more unexpected. Allegedly, while performing, the shoulder strap of her dress broke. Despite her best efforts to cover up, the dress fell to her feet as the crowd cheered her on. At that moment, she had a brilliant revelation. I could be a star without any talent at all. Either way, she was determined to become a burlesque star. Just as Gypsy had hoped, burlesque proved to be even more profitable than her days in vaudeville. But she wasn't exactly proud of her new line of work. When her sister paid her a visit, Gypsy said, I don't want you to see the show. To her shame, June did watch the show and saw her sister bear it all on stage in front of a group of rowdy men. 
Even though the money was rolling in, Gypsy wanted more for herself than the life of a common burlesque dancer. Fortunately for her, even with her shapely legs, elegant neck, and blooming auburn beauty, her biggest asset was still her brain. With all of that book learning, Gypsy didn't just have wit in her act. She often improvised clever quips with audience members and had priceless one-liners for the press. She was almost getting too famous for her own good. As her unique burlesque performances gained attention, Gypsy knew that it was time for a rebrand. The girl born as Rose Louise Hovick changed her name to Gypsy Rose Lee. By 1931, Gypsy had perfected her act and was ready for a bigger stage. Performing at Minsky's Burlesque, she became a massive star and received top billing as the most beautiful girl in the world. She stayed with Minsky's for four years, growing her star each year. But even she could feel it. Bigger things were calling. Gypsy was always best at doing nothing. Throughout her life, Gypsy's younger sister had encouraged her to take acting classes. Or frankly, to take any classes to hone what little talent she had. After her debut with Ziegfeld, the critics wrote, Miss Lee is a competent enough accomplice, but it is at doing nothing that she is at her best. Actually, she was better at being bad. Despite her misgivings about burlesque, Gypsy returned to the tantalizing style of entertainment when Broadway didn't work out. She fell back into burlesque lifestyle with ease. She smoked fine Turkish cigs, spiked her black coffee, and even had an affair with the notorious comedian and playboy Rags Raglan. At the height of her fame, the authorities and polite society considered burlesque to be immoral. As a result, more often than she would admit, Gypsy found herself clamped in irons every time the authorities raided Minsky's. But she seemed to enjoy the paddy wagon and iron bars. Or rather, she seemed to enjoy the bad company she found there. As the biggest star in the seedy underworld of burlesque, it didn't take long for Gypsy to fall in with the wrong crowd. Or the right one, depending on who you ask. Gypsy didn't just hang around with racketeers and ruffians. She was kind of one herself. The famous burlesque performer often borrowed material from other non-burlesque acts. When she left Minsky's for a much higher paying outfit, for example, she plagiarized the work of Dwight Fisk. Fisk had a reputation for singing witty, risque numbers to high-end audiences at the Savoy Plaza. Based on what happened next, either no one cared about her plagiarism or no one noticed. After leaving Minsky's, Gypsy upgraded her audience and took up residence at the Irving Place Theatre. While performing at the Irving, Gypsy acquired more than acclaim. She landed a boyfriend, or more so a sugar daddy, named Eddie Braun. Though he was a married man, that didn't bother Gypsy as long as he kept her dripping in diamonds. And that he did. Sadly, even with all that money, she couldn't wipe off the stain of her profession. Gypsy tried once again to get out of burlesque, this time taking off to Hollywood. The studio was eager to get her in front of the camera but couldn't have her burlesque name on the big screen. As such, they forced her to appear under her real name, Louise Hovick. They also wanted her to do something more dramatic to clean up her image. Hoping to bury her reputation as a burlesque dancer even deeper, the studio arranged for Gypsy to marry Arnold Bob Mizzy, a dental supplies manager. Somehow, the complete character makeover didn't seem to bother Gypsy at all. She should have asked for better press. After polishing off her reputation, Gypsy made her big screen debut in 1937's You Can't Have Everything. But her hopes of Hollywood stardom lasted about as long as her fake marriage. It didn't. The critics panned the film and her acting. After appearing in four more unsuccessful movies, Gypsy went back to New York, but she feared nothing good was waiting for her back there. At the age of 28, Gypsy feared that her days of burlesque would soon be coming to an end. Thankfully, her sister met the producer, Michael Todd, who mentioned that he was looking for a leading lady for an upcoming show. When June mentioned Gypsy, Todd exclaimed, that's a no-talent broad worth a million bucks on any midway. It was the beginning of something beautiful, and tragic. Todd provided Gypsy with the opportunity she had been yearning for, an escape from burlesque. Gypsy starred in a string of successes for Todd on Broadway, even investing her own money in the productions to reap the rewards. But Gypsy wanted more from Todd than top billing. Shortly after their partnership began, Gypsy and Todd forged a special kind of partnership. He was spectacular in his way, June later recalled, 
and she loved it. But sadly, Todd didn't love Gypsy back. At least not enough. He was already married and refused to consider a divorce because he didn't want to risk losing his son. Gypsy, however, wasn't going to let him go without a fight. In 1942, Gypsy made a drastic move. In an effort to make Todd jealous, she announced a sudden engagement to the actor William Alexander Kirkland. Gypsy planned their wedding and hoped that Todd would burst through the doors and stop the marriage, professing an undying love for her. However, when the time came for the I do's, there was no Todd in sight. Her heartbreak was only just beginning. Even after her charade of a marriage, Gypsy kept up her affair with Todd. But the love was gone, and so was Gypsy's luck. When Todd announced his next production, he hired Joan Blondell, a real actress, for the lead instead of Gypsy. Worse yet, he added insult to injury when he told Gypsy that he wanted to marry Blondell. Her bad luck in love still wasn't over yet. Gypsy's marriage to Kirkland had been an elaborate ruse, so there was really no reason for her to honor it, and she definitely didn't. Throughout her marriage to Kirkland, Gypsy had been having an affair with the film director Otto Preminger. Before long, she found herself pregnant with Preminger's child. Thankfully, she promptly agreed to divorce Kirkland, but that hardly made things better. Gypsy hadn't had a good mother growing up, but that didn't mean she couldn't be a good mother herself. She devoted her life to her son Eric and protected him from her mistakes. Gypsy didn't tell Eric about his true identity until he was in his late teens. I decided to have something no one would ever be able to take away from me, Gypsy explained. Just as Gypsy established herself outside of burlesque, June became a megastar with her own breakout role in Pal Joey. Gypsy and June did little to combat their rivalry in the press. They knew it was good for business. But outside of the gossip pages, the sisters got on famously, even if they didn't always approve of each other's choices. But neither of them could escape their mother. At the height of her fame in the 1930s, Gypsy's mother became the central figure in a scandalous story that was covered up to salvage Gypsy's reputation. Allegedly, Mother Rose had fatally wounded a woman, Genevieve Augustine, at a boarding house that she was running. While that would have been enough to grab headlines, there was more. And it was bad news for Gypsy. Some people, including Gypsy's son Eric, believed that there was more to the Augustine story. Famously, Mother Rose's boarding house had become a haven for lesbians. Even as ink was drying on the gossip pages, people began to speculate that Augustine had been Mother Rose's lover. And they gave a curious explanation for her fatal actions. According to Eric, it was Gypsy and not Mother Rose who was the central character in this lethal tale. Eric claimed that Mother Rose's motivation in offing Augustine had been jealousy because of a wildly inappropriate love triangle. Allegedly, Augustine had made a pass at Gypsy, enraging Mother Rose and prompting the fatal encounter. After all of the drama she had brought, in 1954, Gypsy and her sister were finally free of their mother. And now to the chilling betrayal I mentioned earlier, Mother Rose passed away from colon cancer, but not before haunting Gypsy with one final remark. Wherever you go, I'll be right there. When you get your own private kick in the butt, just remember, it's a present from me to you. But Gypsy was determined to have the last laugh. Free of her mother's ghost, Gypsy wrote a memoir of her life that told the whole story of her family. Or at least most of it. Gypsy's memoir turned out to be equal parts fact and fiction and it didn't paint her sister in the best light either. Gypsy's tell-all, tall tales of the Hovick girls drove a wedge between the once close sisters. With a secure source of income thanks to her memoirs and the stage and screen adaptations, Gypsy retired from performing. In her later years, she had her own show, The Gypsy Rose Lee Show, which aired from 1965 to 1968. But she never lost sight of what had made her rich and famous, burlesque. In 1969, at the age of 58, Gypsy proved to the world that she did in fact have a talent. Even pushing 60, she was still the world's best burlesque performer. On a trip to Vietnam, Gypsy performed for the American troops, who whooped and hollered with glee and amazement. Sadly, her dancing days were tragically numbered. Only months after performing in Vietnam, Gypsy received some devastating news. 
Her doctor made the heart-wrenching diagnosis. Gypsy had lung cancer. When she got the news, Gypsy couldn't help but recall what her mother had said only moments before drawing her last breath. Later, she told her sister, This is a present, you know, from mother. She passed away in Los Angeles in 1970. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos.